When enough insane people scream in harmony that they really are healthy, they can actually start to believe it themselves. Or put even more simply, people with overlapping delusions get along wonderfully. And this week's opening quote comes from Daniel Mackler. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host for the next hour. You know, one of the biggest problems that we face in the world today really is the overlapping delusions of the populace in as much as it is their failure to admit or to want to really face the undeniable truth that the reason the world is in the state that it's in today can all be traced to the simple fact that the world is run by criminals. And that includes virtually every government on the face of this earth, ladies and gentlemen, without exception. That is the reason the world is in the state that it's in. It's because the world is not run by legitimate governments, it's not run by an elite, it's not run by an oligarchy, it's run by a cacistocracy of career criminals who have made it their life's work to enslave the lives of others. That is the problem that we face. And until people are prepared to admit that one simple truth, we are never going to find the solution to the human condition. You see, that's why we never find a way out of this mess. That's why no systems that anybody wants to put in place ever work. That's why no plan that anybody has ever come up with to lead us to safety has ever led us there. Because they have failed to identify and take into account the simple truth of the matter. The world is run by criminals, and it's really as simple as identifying that one truth and acknowledging that one truth. And really, if you need evidence to back up the claim that the world is run by criminals, well, as I've said so many times previously, Exhibit A, the Earth. Have a look at the place. It's an absolute mess. And why is it a mess? It's a mess because of the actions that are undertaken by governments. I mean, honestly, the cognitive dissonance of most of the population is really astounding. The way most of the world seems to be suffering Stockholm Syndrome and can't wait to pander to the needs of these politicians and chase after their every word and follow them down the street and cheer and throw flowers. The way people get distracted with political theatre is astounding. It's absolutely amazing how much of the independent media has dropped the ball and has fallen into line with government as well. It's amazing how many people who think Trump is going to lead them to safety and who think the QAnon information is actually going to change things. And QAnon and all the information that's coming out, this isn't going to change anything unless it identifies the fact that the world is run by criminals. And it isn't just a matter of arresting the Clinton Foundation and DynCorp and George Soros. It's a matter of acknowledging that all governments and this entire system itself is a criminal system that is designed specifically to enslave, distract, and corral the human race. That's what it's for. And there are no governments that are your friend. There is no government that is a friend of the people. There is no government on this earth that is doing the right thing. And no government that's ever going to do the right thing because the politicians are not going to do the right thing because the politicians are puppets and criminals themselves, every single one of them. The whole thing is a play, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why we never get any solutions. That's why we never find a way out of the human dilemma. That's why we never see anything really positive come to fruition. As much as we see all these plans of positive things, we hear all this talk of positive things, and we see things coming on the horizon sometimes, but just never seem to really get here. Or if they do get here, they simply don't look like what they were promised to be. And we see all sorts of distractions and all sorts of red herrings leading us to places that ultimately lead nowhere. And the reason is because the world is run by criminals and our failure to address that fact. Now, why do we bother petitioning these people? Why do we bother asking them to please be nicer slave traders rather than simply standing up for ourselves and calling things for what they are? And admittedly, a lot of the reason is fear. People are just afraid to stand up for themselves and people desperately want to be saved. That's why everyone is getting behind this whole QAnon phenomena and everyone thinks Trump is playing 4D chess because they desperately want to be saved. They want the world to change, but they just don't want to have to do anything about it themselves because mainly they're scared to do anything about it themselves. Many people are just scared to stand up for themselves. They're scared to really face things. Like I said, the cognitive dissonance 
is absolutely profound that we see in the world today. I mean, how people could think that Trump is really doing all this stuff to save them when he's capitulating to Israel the way he is, when he's planning on moving the embassy to Jerusalem and approving, basically rubber stamping, the further genocide of the Palestinian people, I don't know how anybody could think that this man is someone who's playing for the people. He's not. He's a man who's playing for the state of Israel. His daughter is married to Jared Kushner, for God's sake. I mean... This man is playing for the state of Israel, and that was pretty obvious when he was elected. There was just some hope that he might do the right thing. But since he's elected, he's done all this theatre on the ground to appease the people in some way, and there's so many people who think he's on the side of the people, but really just look at his actions on the world stage. He's not on the side of the people at all. None of his support for Israel is doing anything good for America or anything good for the people on the ground. None of his posturing against North Korea is doing anything good. It's only going to lead to the introduction of the Chinese system and a loss of America's position as the global reserve currency. Him backing down on the nuclear agreement with Iran is just simply playing into the hands of Israel and allowing them to further provoke a war with that country. And just as he was flailing and just as everyone was waiting for something major to happen, out comes the QAnon information and everyone suddenly thinks that Trump's playing 4D chess. And this is all simply fake news, ladies and gentlemen. Because even with everything that Trump is doing, everything that QAnon is saying, underneath the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen, is the smart grid, which is still rolling out. All the technology is still rolling out. All of the 5G system is still coming online. The new Silk Road that China is putting together, One Belt, One Road, this is still all coming online. We're seeing huge promotion of China at the moment, China and Japan, and how we could learn so much from China's model. And you can see where it's all being led, ladies and gentlemen. And it's all part of the same play. And when you look at the Chinese system, there's some very interesting things happening with the Chinese system. A couple of weeks ago or a week ago, I did a show on the Richie Allen show where I spoke about the new Chinese social credit system that they are rolling out that actually monitors your trustworthiness via your level of agreement with government policies. So think about that one. There's a man who is a very, very well-respected journalist in China who had most of his privileges revoked, things that he was entitled to do normally, suddenly he's simply not eligible to do anymore. And there's no appeal process. And this is things like catching aircraft, buying airline tickets, buying train tickets, buying land. So basically he's been shut out of the system and hasn't been told about it. He's simply gone to purchase an airline ticket and he's been told that he's not eligible for that ticket because the machine says so, the computer says so. And there's no one he can approach about it. There's no one he can write to. There's no one he can call. There's absolutely nothing he can do to fix the situation. And this has happened to something like 7.4 million people in China who have all done the wrong thing, according to government. And not only are these people being penalised for doing the wrong thing, but people who agree with government, people who do what they're told, people who are good little sheep all, all get rewards for doing what they're told. So this is the new type of credit system that they're bringing online in China. And you can be guaranteed that this is the type of credit system that is also going to be coming online in all of our countries. If we continue to use the tech, use smartphones for everything we do, and post all of our lives on social media. If people continue to allow themselves to be tracked everywhere they go with their smartphones and allow their Facebook Messenger application on their smartphone to monitor every action they do, listen to everything they say, store copies of every photograph they take and record audio with every photograph that they take, and not only that, but to dump the whole thing down to a data server, because that is what the Facebook app is for. The Facebook Messenger app is a government data miner that tracks everything everybody does. This is one of the reasons I don't use smartphones, and it's one of the reasons why even if I did use a smartphone, I most certainly would not have the Facebook Messenger app installed on it. And you can tell that to people, and they'll go, oh, gee, that's really bad that it does that, but it's just so convenient having it here. And that's the thing. That's how they get you. But really, it's not convenient at all, ladies and gentlemen. All these personal assistants simply drain you of your ability to think they remove you of your ability to perform the most simplest actions, and they record and monitor every single action you perform. 
and all of these things and all the posts that you've liked and all the videos you've shared and all the opinions that you've had and all the stuff that you've done, this will all be put against you very soon when the new social credit system comes online and that is the plan. That's why they put it all there, folks. Another thing they've done in China is they've actually changed the phone sound. The sound that a caller hears when he rings the number of a person who's been blacklisted by the social credit system, they've changed the sound so that now the person gets a message to say, to alert them, that the person they are calling is on the government's credit blacklist. So think about that one. So basically what they're doing is they're locking a person out of the system simply for questioning or dissenting the actions of government, simply for thinking outside of the box or not doing what you're told. They're making sure other people don't want to have anything to do with this person and they are basically forcing them to become a criminal, forcing them into a life of crime if they wish to survive because it's the only way they're going to get any money. They're not going to be able to do anything. They're not going to be able to use public transport. They're not going to be able to leave the country. Pretty soon, once it all goes digital and it all goes smart and smart supermarkets, cashless supermarkets come online, they won't even be able to go and buy food. So it basically forces people into criminality. It criminalizes anybody who doesn't comply with the system by simply penalizing to the point that they have no other option than to become a criminal or to comply with what the government wants. But you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, the only way they're able to do this is via the smart system. The only way they're able to do it is by digitizing everything, by digitizing currency, digitizing your booking of airline tickets, digitizing machines at airports, digitizing trains, digitizing everything and making it all hooked up to the same smart grid. That's how they are able to do it. And that's what the potential of this system is. Now, it isn't just a matter of you being tracked everywhere you go. It isn't just a matter of them having tabs on everything you do. It's a matter of them locking you out of everything if they don't like what you say, they don't like the way you think. It's a new form of thought police that will penalize you for simply thinking the wrong way or doing the wrong thing. And if it chooses to do so, there is no appeal process for you to be able to reverse this decision because it wasn't made by any person, it was simply made by the machine. And this is what the smart grid is for, and this is how it will be used to control the minds and the lives of the population. Now, as I keep saying to you, in the upcoming system, there will be two types of humans. There will be desirables and there will be undesirables. And the undesirables will be squeezed into situations where they have no other option but to resort to crime so they can be put into the private prison system and that puts bums on seats there nicely and keeps that little circus running as well. You can see where it's all going ladies and gentlemen and none of this is changing. Trump isn't doing anything about this. QAnon isn't doing anything about this. No one is doing anything about this and no one is even talking about it or noticing it because it's happening underneath. It's happening underneath everything else under the guise of smart appliances, a smart system, smart meters and 5G. That's what's happening. And it's going to be all introduced to the world by simply crashing the US dollar, crashing the US economy and introducing the Chinese One Belt One Road trade initiative. And this is how they're planning for it all to go down. And I think it's extremely important that people pay attention and stop being led by the political theater that is happening at the moment. Stop being led by all of this fake news and stop thinking that even if half of the cacistocracy is arrested and theater trials are held for them and they'll probably go off to the Caribbean or wherever it is that they go, don't think that's gonna change anything because what the problem is, is the criminals that are running this world and the smart system that they are bringing online underneath everything else. And all they really have to do is keep the world distracted for the next two years to pull this off. Even the next 18 months, if they can keep people fighting and squabbling amongst themselves and not paying attention until around about 2020, then this whole system's gonna be online. And there'll be very little we can do about it. It's all gonna be finalized by about 2025. And the only thing that's really gonna stop it, folks, is if we can see it coming. And if we start taking action now and we refuse to comply with it. Now, none of it can happen if we don't comply. None of it will work if we don't buy into the tech. You know, we have to start getting active and we have to start educating the kids and start leading them back to what it means to be human rather than what it means to be a technological slave the way they're heading. 
I mean, the kids are losing their life skills to a dramatic degree. They really are. Not a lot of young kids know how to do some of the most basic things. They all know how to use the tech really well. They all know how to function in that world really well. But even the tech is being set up so that you have to pay as you go with the tech. I mean, you can't hardly buy a program anymore. I don't know how many people have noticed, you know, if you buy a new Photoshop or something like that, all you do is you get a license to use it for 12 months and then you have to pay again. So you don't actually get the program. You don't actually get to download the program and store it on your computer. You actually have to use it on the cloud and pay as you go. Same with Word and all this sort of stuff. You have to pay as you go. So it's kind of starting to appear in the tech world now this whole smart system this is why i still use old apps i still use photoshop 7 i've got all these old programs that i use and i continue to use i still use windows 7 on my computer i've just never moved past that point because i could see where it was all going but not only is the tech going in that direction the people are going in that direction as well the people are being sort of treated like technology people have been treated more like commodities now than they ever have been and the world's really gone crazy in the last few years, most especially since about 2012 or 2013. Things really started to go crazy. You know, back in 2013, there still looked like there was a little bit of sanity to things. But in 2014, when ISIS came out and everything started to snowball in that direction, the world just went mad and it's remained reasonably crazy and reasonably unpredictable ever since. But a lot of it is theatre, you know, order out of chaos. They want all the chaos, they want everything mad and everything crazy so people don't notice what's happening below the surface, which again is the smart grid. And make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, the smart grid is the new world order. That is what they've been sneaking out while nobody's been looking. A lot of people just aren't prepared to admit that. As I said, a lot of people want to be saved. A lot of people are looking for salvation to come from some external source. They're not seeing how they are leading themselves into this control grid by simply buying into what is being presented to them as convenience. You know, all of these things are not convenient. All of these things are there to monitor you. All of these things are there to remove you of your life skills and remove you of your neural function, remove you of your cognitive function. As I was saying to someone the other day, how many people can still remember phone numbers? How many people could go and call their better half, their wife or their husband or their mother or their father? if they didn't have their smartphone to dial the number for them? How many people actually remember the numbers that they used to know when they were a child? I mean, I can still remember my parents' phone number from when I was a child, but I can't remember my sister's phone number from now because I never dial it. It's always stored on the computer or stored somewhere on a machine and the machine dials it for me. You know, if you were pulled over by the police, God forbid that you ever are, but if you're ever arrested or anything like that, imagine that if you're taken to jail and they tell you you can have your one phone call, would you actually know a number to dial? Would you know the number of your husband or wife or your father or your parents or your brother or sister? Would you know anybody's phone number if they gave you your one phone call? Because most people don't even remember numbers anymore. How many people really know how to write anymore? How many people could sit down and write an essay that would be readable by other people? Because most people don't write anymore. They type. They use notepad. They use thumbs to type on their phone. They don't even use their fingers to type on a keyboard. And they certainly don't use a pen to write anything down. Very rarely do people use pens anymore. So how many people can still write? And even if they can write, can they write coherently? Can they spell properly? Can they remember their way around their own city without a GPS? Can they remember phone numbers? Can they remember how to do some of the most basic things they used to do part of their everyday lives? And is the loss of these skills something of convenience or is it simply a matter of them losing their cognitive function and allowing all of these little details of their life to be handled by a machine, which they risk losing control of? Because what if the power goes out? What if you get locked out of the system? What if suddenly you say the wrong thing and they shut you out of your smartphone and you don't know any phone numbers to call anybody? You don't even know the number of your parents to call for help. You don't know the number of your husband or your wife or anybody to get any assistance in anything that you're doing because you were suddenly locked out of your technology. Yeah, how many people are allowing themselves to be led into this type of a trap? Because really, when you look at it, it's a trap. Now, that might be a strange way for people to look at this, and there might be some out there who accuse me of being paranoid or being a fear monger for even saying anything like that, but... Really, you've got to look at it, folks, and look at it with an open mind. I mean, how is the loss of cognitive function anything good? 
How is a loss of basic life skills under the guise of convenience anything good? And how can anything good come of this? You know, you can't ever fix a problem unless you can identify what the problem is. And one of the hardest things is bringing this information to kids because they've had all this stuff stolen from them, but they don't even know that it's been stolen from them because it's not stuff that they ever experienced. You know, they never experience a connection to the earth that they should have. They never experience what it's like to be a real child. Most of the kids today never experienced a real childhood. And that's a sad thing to say, but it's true. I mean, sure, there's a lot out there that do. But most of the kids in Western society, they get given an iPad as soon as they're old enough to know how to handle one. You know, I've seen parents throw a smartphone in the cradle with their children simply to keep it occupied to stop the child crying. So people get immersed in this technology very, very quickly and they lose their connection to the family unit. The parents are often too busy to really give the child the time it needs and the child is just stuck in this technological world and grows up into this technological world never knowing that there was anything different to that. So that's the thing, you know, you steal all this stuff from people and it's very difficult to help them ever get it back because many of them are simply unaware of what's been stolen from them. And you try to tell them about it, but they have no reference point because they haven't ever seen reality. They haven't even seen their parents act in a very real way. And again, this is the result of programming and the result of training. You can't blame anybody for the way they do things. You can't blame anybody for a lack of parenting skills in the modern world because the modern world is designed to create people that don't have any parenting skills. And it's all been done by design. It's all been done deliberately as part of a program, as part of an ongoing objective to lead the world exactly to where it is now. So you can't blame people for the way they are. And it's very difficult to blame people for the state of the world even though it really does come down to us it comes down to resting on our shoulders because we tolerate all this stuff but the problem is in trying to present it to people is that they have no reference point of what it is they're even tolerating or how they're even tolerating it they don't even see that they're tolerating anything they think they're just being good people and doing what they're supposed to do and obeying the law and walking between the lines the way everybody is supposed to do And they think that way because they've been trained to think that way. So that's what makes it so difficult, even looking at all this information and even attempting to look for solutions to the problems that we face, because it's so difficult to be able to explain it to people in a way that they understand, in a way they can easily comprehend what's going on. And it becomes very difficult to attempt to implement any solutions because the solutions have to come from within the hearts of the collective consciousness, from within the hearts of the people in society. People have to change their own behavior because that's the only way the world is going to change. You know, people have to stop tolerating wrong behavior. They've got to stop doing the wrong thing simply because the law tells them they must. And they need to question authority. They need to vet this legislation and these laws and all of these rules and all these things that are coming in and start stepping away from this technology, start taking responsibility for themselves again and start learning some basic life skills. The next time you ring someone on your telephone, actually look the number up and then go and ring the number yourself. If it's a push button phone, hey, push the buttons. I'm sure you won't be able to dial the number anymore, but push the buttons, at least get to know the number. Don't just let your phone call it for you, because you may need this number one day. You may need to know this information one day, and you know, your brain is like anything. If you don't use it, it stops working. Same as if you don't use your legs, you don't use your arms, you don't use any particular muscle or any particular organ in your body, it becomes atrophied and it stops working. And the same thing happens to your brain, and this is what the technology is doing to our brains. You know, we might be thinking we're getting smarter because we're looking at these computers and we can do all these massive calculations and create all these great things, but it's not us doing it, it's the computer doing it. You know, we can draw all these wonderful things, but it's not us drawing it, it's the computer drawing it for us. We just know how to use the program. And in the process, our own skills become reduced, our own cognitive function becomes reduced. And the more we use the tech and the more we allow the tech to do things for us, the less we notice how much we are losing our cognitive function and how much we are handing our lives over to the technology. That's the way it works. The more we use it, the more complacent we become about using it and the more we hand our skills over to it. And that's what it's always been about, folks, because the less skill people have, the more easily people are controlled. You know, it went way back when they introduced packet cake mixes and 
packet of recipes and things just to stop the women from knowing how to cook. And they started introducing machinery to prevent men having real skills to get the machinery to do it for them. And now they've introduced computers to replace our minds as well. You know, the whole thing has been a play and it's all been presented to us as convenience, but it's all led ultimately to a loss of life skills. That's what all this stuff has been for. You know, when you look at Edward Bernays' propaganda and how they use certain things to control the way people think and to lead the societies in certain directions, this is the way they've done it. And the whole thing has been related. It's all been by design and it's all been to lead people into this control grid. And a loss of life skills is essential for the control grid to work, you know, for us to enslave ourselves and willingly give ourselves away to the conveniences. This is essential to the control grid. Now, that's what is wrong with conveniences. They're not convenient. They're a loss of life skills. Every time you do something that's more convenient than doing it properly, you're actually losing your ability to function in the real world. You're limiting your ability to do some task that is a normal part of life. And by not performing these really simple tasks that we do all the time and we take for granted all the time, by allowing these tasks to be performed by machines, we willingly lead ourselves into this slavery system. Because it can't work without that. You know, it can't work without us succumbing to the pleasure of convenience. And once it all gets locked into place, folks, it's going to be far from pleasurable, I'll tell you that. And there's not going to be too many people that can find a way out of it simply because they're not going to have the life skills to be able to find their way out of it. And many of the kids coming up, again, they're not even going to be looking for a way out of it because, again, they're not going to have any reference point for what freedom looks like. They're not even going to understand what you mean when you say to them that they are losing their life skills. They're not even going to have any concept of what life skills actually are. That is where we're being led, and it's a pretty freaky situation. Fortunately, a lot of people are waking up to it, and so hopefully that will lead to something positive because people are becoming aware of the problem and people are realizing that we are being led into a bad spot and now is the time that we have to stand up and do something about it. And many people are seeing this and many people are wanting to get active, and that's a good thing. But I think we've reached break time here, folks. I'll leave it there for now and we're going to have a break. Thank you for joining me on the air today. It's always a pleasure to have your company. And I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thanks for listening. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, in looking at this entire situation that we're facing and in attempting to find some sort of a solution, some sort of a path to freedom, The real problem that we face that I can see is people's unwillingness to lead themselves, people's need to be led. You know, everybody is scared, everybody is looking for a way out, everybody wants change. And so what happens is something comes along to offer them this scenario that tells them that it's all imminent and they don't have to do anything. And people just sit back, they grab the popcorn and they start watching the sideshow to see it all happen. And it never really does. And that's what this whole QAnon thing is doing. Everyone's waiting for all this great stuff to happen, but they're not looking what's underneath. They're not seeing that even if it's true, even if people get arrested, the smart grid isn't changing and the smart grid is the problem. You know, all of this other stuff is a distraction. It's all being done to lead you away from what is happening right beneath your feet, right under your nose. You know, it's the smart grid. And it's finding a way out of that smart grid, finding a way back to our humanity, finding a way to blend the technology that is being brought online to enslave us, finding a way to use this technology to our advantage rather than allowing it to be led into a place where it's got this economic overlap happening. Because that economic overlap is the slavery system itself. And all they have to do to pull it off is to digitize cash and to bring this 5G grid online. And you look at the 5G grid, I mean, sure, there's all this bad stuff to do with 5G. There's all these bad health issues to do with 5G. The fact that it's an active denial system, the fact that all of these things are underlying it, this is all bad. But the reason for the 5G system to come online really is simply because of the speed that it's going to provide because you're going to need that speed to be able to run the Internet of Things. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to have billions of transactions happening at one time. 
which is what's going to be happening once the Internet of Things comes online. If you've got billions of people out there shopping at the one time and no one's using cash and it's all smart and it's all being detected by the system, you've got millions and millions of transactions happening per second, then you're going to need a system that has the bandwidth to make that possible. And that can only come from 5G. So that's the main reason for 5G. But that's all they need for the control grid folks is for this speed to have that type of bandwidth to allow it to happen and to place an economic value on every action you perform and to digitize cash. And in that sort of a situation, it doesn't matter what form the cash takes. It doesn't matter whether it's fiat cash. It doesn't matter whether it's blockchain. It doesn't matter whether it's centralized or decentralized. It doesn't matter what form it takes as long as it's digital. Because once it's digital, they've got you. Remember that. Once it's digital, they've got you. And look at what your phones are doing as well. Look at how you are being tracked everywhere you go with your phone. Everywhere you go, it asks you if you want to rate the place you just visited. It's like, how did you know I just visited this store? You know, what's it got to do with you? But they want a rating on everything, and that's the way they do it to you. They make you get involved. Oh, look, please, rate this place and rate it for other people so they know what it's like to visit this fish and chip shop or wherever you just went. And it seems perfectly innocent when they do it to you that way. They let you know you're being tracked, but they get you involved. So, oh, yeah, I'll do a little rating on the fish and chip shop. I'll put my little five stars there or my two stars or whatever and let people know what the service was like. And you feel important. You feel like you're being involved and you're contributing to society. But what's happening is you're being tracked. You're being surveilled. Every action you perform is being monitored. And they get you involved in it, so you become accepting of it. That's why they get you to participate. That's why they get you to sign your name and rate these places and put little five stars here and little two stars there. And they ask you about what it was like to visit the beach you just visited or the park you just visited or the town square you just visited or the fountain you just saw at the mall because they know you were there. And people think it's all cute. They think it's all great and they like to be involved. And that's how they get you, folks. That's where the complacency comes in. The complacency towards the surveillance because all of this stuff that they ask you to be involved in is really just letting you know you're under surveillance in everything that you do and creating an acceptance for that surveillance. Can you see how that works? It just becomes normal for you to contribute everywhere you go, to have a little say, to put your little mark everywhere you go. But really it's about tracking you and it's about surveillance and it's introducing complacency into the minds of the people and acceptance into the minds of the people. That's what it's always been about, folks. That's what mobile phones are for. That's what the whole smart system is designed to do. That's what conveniences are all about. Acceptance for surveillance, acceptance for a loss of life skills, acceptance for a loss of cognitive function. And the real problem here is how the kids are being led into this technology, how the kids are being led into this reality, and how they're not going to have any reference point when they come out of school. You know, it's really important that people get involved in their kids' education. It really is. It's important that people begin to pay attention to what the government is teaching your children. It's very important that you start taking an active role in being a parent. You know, getting involved in the afternoon, going playing with your kids, going doing something with them, getting them away from the technology. Go out and visit a creek, go for a walk in the mountains, go for a walk in the forest, go to the beach, go and do something with your children that does not involve technology. You know, get them back in touch with the earth, get them in touch with their life skills, get them in touch with what it means to be human. You know, people have an incredible expressive potential inside them, everybody does. And this gets channeled into this whole virtual world and this removes our expression from us and a lot of it becomes about competition you know once we immerse ourselves in that world it becomes vying for attention it becomes competing for attention it becomes about all of this superficial surface stuff and what you look like you know most of the internet is about what you look like it's all about pictures on snapchat and instagram and all this sort of stuff and people create these fake personas of themselves on these mediums and these social platforms and then when they have to meet people in the real world they're embarrassed to meet them because they don't look like the picture that they put up there or they've just never interacted with people in the real world very much and they don't have many real communication skills that don't involve texting Yeah, that's the kind of a situation we've got, and that's the kind of a world we're allowing to be created. And it's because we're not really playing an active role in our children's lives. We're not really playing an active role in our education system and where the future generations are being led.
We're just simply allowing the politicians to dictate where we should go, and we're just going along with it. And again, all of this is because of fear. It's because of this fear mentality that's been put in people's minds where everybody who thinks differently should be distrusted because of the spectre of terrorism and the spectre that anybody who thinks outside the box or questions their government must be an evil person and maybe a mad bomber. You know, it's all been contrived and put in people's minds this way. But ultimately, it's just a criminal system that is finding every way possible that it can come up with to control the minds of the people. And it is a criminal system, folks. The world is run by criminals. It's as simple as that. You know, all of these government agents, all of these government operatives, this is really what they are, these politicians, they're just government operatives and operatives for the bankers and their henchmen, the police, all these people are criminals. Now, go to a court case and check out any court document. Look at the people that are in the court. Go and have a look at the defendant who'll be in the court as a registered person. Have a look at the police officers that were there giving testimony against this person. None of these people even registered themselves in the court. None of them are registered entities. The only registered entity in the courtroom is the defendant because the defendant is there as a commercial product and is there to have his wealth milked from him and to be hung out to dry. You know, it's a slavery system, and all the people know this, the police know this, otherwise they would go into the court as registered entities the way any other person is required to do. But they don't do it because they put themselves outside the law because there is no law. The law is only there to control the people. And the fact that the police do this shows that they know. They're part of it. They're complicit. They're lying to you. They're stealing from you. They're putting you in cages if you don't comply. Why? Because they're criminals. The police is the biggest criminal gang of thugs the world has ever seen. And it's run by the criminal gang, the criminal enterprise, euphemistically referred to as federal government in each of our countries, which are essentially corporations anyway, simply department stores, simply subsidiaries of the World Bank or whatever you want to call it. You know, this whole fictitious system, you know, that's what it's always been about, folks. It's this fiction that controls us because these criminals have figured out how to do it and they don't educate the people to the point where they ever understand what's going on and people are just kept too busy they're kept too busy running on the treadmill to ever have the time to really look at all this stuff and to see how the world is run and don't dare ever speak about it don't dare ever say anything about it because if you do well you might be thinking outside the box and therefore you might be a threat and therefore you might be a terrorist and we have to put you in a cage and that's the way it's going. No free thought allowed. Just do what you're told or get subject to the new credit system, like the social credit system like the Chinese are bringing online and which will soon be brought online in all of our countries as well, simply because we put up with all this, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, we've got to identify this and start calling it out for what it is. You know, admit the simple fact that the world is run by criminals. That's why we are in the state that we're in. That's why it is such a struggle for people to get through this life and to get through this world. It's not just because times are hard and jobs are scarce and all the stuff that they put in your mind. It's because the world is run by criminals who are milking the wealth of everybody that they can and enslaving people as much as they can and discarding anybody who thinks outside the box and virtually criminalizing anybody who thinks outside the box by locking them out of the system to the point that the only option they have left is to carry out crime in order to survive, to steal from people or to do whatever just to survive. You know, and it gets to the point, well, what do you do? You become homeless, you're on the street, you've got no food, and what do you do? You've been discarded by society, and you get to situations where, like in England, it's becoming a crime to be homeless. And yet the government is creating homeless people by design in order to populate the prison system. And it's getting to the point where all you're going to have to do to become homeless is to think outside the box, because if you think outside the box, you're going to get locked out of the most basic services that have always been there for you. And again, this can only happen because everything is now digitized. And so that's the danger of where we're going, ladies and gentlemen. And it's difficult, you know, I mean, how do you present this information to people? You know, what do I do when I can see all of this happening and all of this unfolding? What do I do? Do I come onto the radio show and just be positive and tell you about all the great things that are happening when I can see all this happening underneath it? And if all of these things are going on underneath, if this whole smart grid is coming online, then 
What does it matter if there's someone with a permaculture initiative that has got something great going on? Because that's not going to work if this smart grid comes online. The smart grid will prevent all of that happening. The smart grid will underlie everything else. And all of the positive things we want to implement, that's all very well for us to do it. But the devil is in the details because we're not looking at what is underlying it, which is the smart grid. And if we can deal with the smart grid, then we can implement all these other things. We can start really changing the world. And we could actually have a smart grid that worked. We could have a smart grid that was beneficial to mankind if it wasn't based on an economic model. If there wasn't this economic overlap with technology and economics, then the whole smart grid could work. It could be very good. It could be something highly beneficial. Like I keep saying to people, there's nothing wrong with technology, there's nothing wrong with a smart system, there's nothing wrong with things being automated, there's nothing wrong with having mobile phones, there's nothing wrong with instant communication, there's nothing wrong with the internet, there's nothing wrong with any of these things. It's the economic overlap, it's the fact that the world is run by criminals and it is criminals who are controlling the direction of the technology, that is the problem. And until we're prepared to admit that, we're not going to get anywhere. You know, that's the thing. People won't admit the basic truth. People sit back and wait to be saved. And people hope someone else is going to come along and do things for them. But it doesn't work that way. You know, you've got to take responsibility for yourselves. And you've got to be prepared to admit what's going on below the surface. You've got to really be prepared to step back and look at things and look at where we're being led. And all you've got to do, I mean, if you look at the past few generations, folks, even the past few decades, just look at what's happened since 9-11. Look what's happened in the last 20 years. Not even 20 years, 18 years. You know, we've changed so much as a society. We've been led so far away from ourselves. And we thought we were headed for a time of great peace when the new millennium came along. And then 9-11 happened and suddenly we get led into this war of terror and this whole smart grid to combat the war of terror. Which is what it was always about. The whole war of terror was about bringing about this surveillance system. You know, decimating the third world, going out there and controlling the resources of many countries as they can, introducing central banks in every country that doesn't have one, because you've got to have a central bank, you've got to have this centralised system in order to control the country. But we've been looking at it as a central banking thing. You know, that's the big problem is the central banks and the countries that don't have central banks. And yeah, that's all very well. Maybe it was a problem for a while. But now that it's moving all over to digital, it isn't really going to matter whether you have a central banking system. It's only going to matter whether you have a smart grid. It's only going to matter whether you have the technology. It's only going to matter whether your currency is digital and whether your electrical and food and management systems are smart. That's all that is going to matter. That's how they've managed to do it. You know, we've been looking in the wrong direction. We've been looking as the New World Order as being some sort of a physical thing, Nazi Germany on steroids, you know, people in jackboots wandering around. And sure, they've done that with the police. They've made the police take on this role and look like huge Kevlar-clad thugs because it's good for that system. It's good to put it in the minds of the people. But really, that isn't the problem. Those guys will be used to mop up the streets for sure, but the problem isn't going to be police standing around with black batons and machine guns everywhere the problem is going to be the surveillance grid that is in place that tracks everything you do the problem is going to be a world like is described in minority report and equilibrium and films like that a world where every action that you perform is monitored that is the new world order and it's going to come out and it's going to roll out unless people become aware of it and they start focusing on it and shifting the direction that it's taking because we can change the direction it's taking folks like i keep saying there's nothing wrong with technology it's just this economic overlap but we have to be prepared to identify the problem and not be sitting back in cognitive dissidence thinking that we're heading for a golden age when we could be but we're not because the world is run by criminals and we continue to miss that fact Now, that's the underlying thing with everything that we're doing. Unless we can look at that as the foundation of the corruption of this system, then how are we ever going to address the problem? It's like you're trying to build a wall on an uneven foundation. And no matter how many times we rip up the wall and build it again, we never change the foundation. We keep that uneven foundation there and we actually think we're going to get a better wall. It's not going to work. You've got to fix the foundation first. And the foundation of this system is criminality. 
pure and simple common criminality. That is the problem, and it is our tolerance of this in our political and legal and judicial systems that causes all these problems and allows them to continue, and we have to be prepared to identify that one basic simple truth. You know, I'm really looking forward to the time when I can actually come on the air here and just do a really positive radio show and tell you about all the good things that are happening in the world and all the positive steps we are making for change. I'm really looking forward to that time. I think it's coming and I'm just hoping it gets here soon. But unfortunately that day was not today and I do apologize for some of the negative information that I bring you on the radio show. I know it's sometimes uncomfortable to listen to and I don't like to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I just think it's prudent to look at things open-mindedly and to always pay attention to what the left hand is doing. Like I said, you've got to expect the worst, but hope for the best. But really, when you look at this system, I've seen us been led so many places on so many occasions. I've seen us been offered so many carrots of hope but nothing has ever really come to fruition. And I just see all these plays in place at the moment where underneath it, as I keep saying, is the smart grid. And I think that's what we need to pay attention to. So do pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's important that we do. It's important for your children that you pay attention and to not be scared of the technology. I mean, the technology is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. We can use it to our benefit. It's just looking at where we are being led. It's the overlap that's happened between technology and economics that is the problem and when we look at the economic system as i've said so many times in the past you know the economic system was created to service the needs of mankind yet somehow in order to balance the economic system mankind has become the most expendable thing within the parameters of the economic system so it's all backwards it's all become something that now controls us and places itself above the needs of mankind. You know, the economic needs, the need to balance the books, and this isn't anything real, this is just numbers on a screen, numbers on paper, it isn't anything you can eat, anything you can touch, anything you can feel, anything that is alive, it's simply numbers. And there's no way this should be more important than humanity. But it has become that way, and it has become the cause of most of the problems that we face, the need for different countries to claw over each other to balance their books, to get the highest numbers, to get the highest digital count, to get the highest credit rating. All of this stuff which is completely fictitious, all of this stuff that doesn't actually mean anything, that is the problem. You know, the problem is we've been led into this direction purposefully. And money is something that people simply take for granted, so people just don't notice it. But really, it's the catalyst that holds the whole thing together, the economic system. And that's the problem. Now, that's where technology has become the foe of mankind because of the economic overlap that's happened in the technological world. That's why it no longer serves us when it could serve us. You know, we've just been led away from what reality is and we've been locked into this model where we believe we have to pay for every aspect of our lives and it seems perfectly normal. But it's not normal, ladies and gentlemen. You shouldn't have to pay to be alive and you shouldn't have to live where every action you perform is monitored. You know, this whole climate of fear that's been introduced into our societies through this completely fake war of terror, you know, the need to look behind any rock and to view anybody who thinks differently to you as a suspected terrorist or a possible threat. This is absolutely ridiculous. This type of mentality that's been put into people's minds has served to close them off from other people and has served to put them in a situation where they can be controlled and the whole thing has been done by design. As I said, I'm really looking forward to the time that I can come onto the radio show and bring you positive information. And hey, I could do it. I could come here. I could wear white robes and come onto the radio show and I could tell you all the things that you want to hear. And I could be one of these new age gurus that leads you down this little garden path and tells you that the whole world is heading for a wonderful place and we don't have to worry about anything and that everything's perfect and that we're all going to be saved. But it wouldn't be a responsible thing to do. It wouldn't be the truth. You know, the truth is that nothing is changing. With all of this stuff that's going on, all the theatre and all the rhetoric and everything we're seeing, nothing is changing, ladies and gentlemen. 
You know, there's always goodness hovering on the outskirts. There's always the possibility of something wonderful happening because all the technology is there and there's always these great ideas and there's always this thing which could be imminent, but it just never comes because we always sit there waiting for it to come. We don't ever work proactively to make it come. You know, and we could change the world in a day by simply changing our perspective. This is something that I've said so many times, and it's true. We could do this. You know, if we were to simply change our attitude and to stop tolerating wrong behavior and to do the right thing in all that we do, to give to people, to not put economics as the main focus of our lives, we could change the world very, very quickly. But we don't do that. You know, we sit there and we look at all this positive stuff. We see all these positive things, you know, whether it's permaculture, whether it's this, whether it's that. We see this and we go, oh, wow, that's great. Isn't it going to be great when they implement that? But it's always when they implement that. What about when we implement it? Why don't we work proactively to make these things happen? We don't because legislation prevents us, but we don't ever address that. We just go, oh, well, it'll be better when they change the legislation and then we can do it. But they're not going to change the legislation. You know, nobody is going to change anything until we start behaving proactively on the ground where we live and begin to implement these changes ourselves. That's what needs to happen. We've got to realize that we are our own salvation and we can change things. If we're just going to sit back and watch and allow the world to be led to where it's going, well, it's not really going to work. Nothing good is going to come from what any of these politicians are doing. Now, all these politicians are corrupt folks. The world is run by criminals. Come on, admit it. It's true. And the problem is that people just won't admit it. They don't want to face that one basic truth because it's just too grim for them. And if they face that truth, it means that they may just have to stand up and act themselves to make change. And people don't want to do that. They want change as long as someone else implements it and they can simply follow along. Well, not everybody, but unfortunately, it is true for a great many people. Well, folks, I think we've reached that time again where we've reached the end of the show. So I'm going to have to leave it there for now. As I've been mentioning quite often lately, I will be speaking at Anacapulco in Mexico around about the 14th and 18th of February, around about that time. After that, I'm going to be speaking at the Open Mind Conference in Ireland, which is going to be early March, I think March the 3rd. Then I will quite possibly be speaking at AV9. I still haven't confirmed that with Ian Crane, but there's a good chance that may happen. And later in the year, around about June, I think, I will be speaking at an event in LA called Regeneration, which has been put on by Benny Wills from Joy Camp. The Combo Workshop that was supposed to happen in March will also be happening in June, I believe. So that's something else you can look forward to. And that is pretty well my running dates for the rest of the year. I'm not going to be doing any more talks other than that. The talk in Ireland and the talk in England... And the talk in LA are kind of three talks that have been added on. And that will be the final talks that I'm doing for quite some time. So if you'd like to come and see me, I suggest coming to one of those events. I'm really looking forward to going and checking out the crew in Ireland and catching up with the people at Open Mind there. And if you're living in Ireland anywhere, please do come along to that event. It'd be great to catch up with you. But that is it for me, folks. Thank you to all those who continue to support the website. Thank you to those who continue to support the Patreon account. As I keep saying, you are the only thing that keeps me going, ladies and gentlemen. I simply cannot thank my Patreon supporters enough. It is wonderful the amount of support that people have shown me. And it really does help, folks. And you're the ones that keep the show on the air. You're the ones that keep this information coming out every week. I couldn't do it if it wasn't for you people. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And please continue the support. And if you are able to make some sort of a contribution, folks, it's always very much appreciated. If I could get enough, I could maybe even get some sort of an assistant to work for me and maybe even double the output and maybe even wake up more people. So that would be a good thing as well. But any support you can give is always greatly appreciated, even if it's only a dollar. That is it for me, folks. I've now completely run out of time. There's still a few interviews to come out that have been recorded in the last couple of weeks as well that may be released in the next couple of days. And I will look forward to speaking to you myself again next week. Please take very good care until then, my friends. In La Keshe.